Hello everybody and welcome to Creativity Time. I am Tatiana from Tatiana Creative Stamping Adventure and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in Australia. I'm very happy to have you join me here during what I call is my Creativity Time. It's my Wednesday 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time live. Jeez, that was a mouthful. <laughs> you know you're watching live when you see the little red live right up there. If that's not there, don't stress, still watch and enjoy, learn something new hopefully and be inspired to be creative and I and still leave a comment please. I still read all the comments, doesn't matter whether it came live or not. Hello Fran, thanks for joining me. Hey Tam, thanks for joining me too. Um, yesterday, was it yesterday? I can't remember my days, Monday. I finally got my free offset, offset wreath template up on my blog. It's a free download um, for you to print at home and to use at home. And I thought, why not use it today? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we're going to create a wreath because I love creating wreaths. And there's a stamp set that I've not used in the wreath creation. And I'm like, oh my goodness, how did I not think of that sooner? So let's head to the craft desk and get stamping. As I said, we will use my free download of the Offset Wreath template today. And I have printed mine off as well. So this is, it comes with some gray bits that you cut off to create the corner to sit in the corner of your Stamparatus. And I've laminated mine so that I can reuse it multiple times and just clean the top but got a little tiny dot there as the, through the lamination process but that's okay that doesn't affect its use so you need to I will you know need to but I like to place it down into the corner and then hold it down with one of my magnets and today we will be using the free as a bird stamp set because I think the flowers will make a beautiful wreath what do we think and thought it'd be fun to watercolor them. So I've cut down a piece of Fluid 100, which is our watercolor paper. And, oh, you're picking up the sun. Oh, is he uh, okay, Priscilla? And on the template, it tells you what size to cut the paper down to. And I've also got it on in letter size. And I have numbers. So just a little overview of the template is that the X is the center point this is where it's rotating around the closer you place the stamp to the X the smaller your wreath will be my pleasure Fran um, the further away the bigger and this one box which I'm now thinking I should have made a bit thicker I might update that online my one is where I suggest you start the corner top right corner and so that's how you line up your stamps and I actually kind of like to line it up before hello Leslie I'm going to send you an email today but I will say Ness now that there is an exciting new joining offer coming on the 3rd of June <coughs> you get to pick a whole bundle to add to your kit in addition to your usual 235 so that is a extra bonus of a minimum of $63 that's really exciting. I'm so excited for this recruiting. Well, not recruiting, it's joining offer. Anyway, so I'm gonna do my wreath and I'm gonna start with the big flower. So I like to start with the flower that, or the image, it doesn't have to do flowers, I've done fruit wreaths before. Um, I like to start with the bigger one, the central focus one. And I'm going to place it about there. And the reason I'm doing that is because I can see all the markings of the template there. And then I'm going to put my paper down. As I said, we're using Fluid 100. And we're going to... That's all in screen, yep. And we're going to watercolour this. And for that reason, I'm using the Stays On ink. It comes with this little cover. You do not... It says... I don't know if you can... See, oh, you can. Uh, <coughs> it says do not discard. So don't. Some people have used a glue dot and put it permanently in the lid. I haven't. Anyway, so we're going to ink and stamp. And one of the good things about stamping with the Stamparatus, the paper, watercolour paper tends to be a bit rougher. 
and sometimes you don't get the perfect stamp so you could re-stamp. And then you just flip to the next corner which is number two, logically. Now I have got all eight rotations here even though you don't necessarily need all eight because it is an offset wreath and so this part of the well, half of the wreath, not half, three quarters of the wreath is stamped and then the rest is off the page. But for convenience it is all there and it has been designed so that it still fits in full rotation into your Stamparatus. So these bits do hang off but the stamping area is fully on the Stamparatus and you can, sorry lining it up, I get quiet when I line up, you can still see how it all works and sits together essentially. <coughs> and there will be one off the edge there, so I'm at number five, so now six. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a slip of paper. You can still stamp because you can clean that if you've laminated, but because this is stays on ink, it's just that little bit of extra work to clean it off the laminate. So I'm just putting that paper down so that I can stamp that confidently without getting it onto my... And seven will not have any stamping, but eight... Position 8 will have finish off our little positioning of the wreath there. And again, I'm going to put this slip of scrap paper. Now again, if you wanted the wreath to be bigger, you would simply have started the flower out further. But remember, you are limited by your paper. <coughs> Because this is stays on ink, regular water doesn't clean it properly. We need the stays on cleaner. It comes in a bottle and it's got this little, it's not a chamois, it's a little, I don't know, pad. So you just rub that on and then I still use, I have a semi-dedicated chamois for it. Really helpful. Good friend. Thanks. <laughs> I just saw that Bruno is live and I'm like, oh well, going to have to miss that one. But thanks for joining me as well, Vicky. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'd like to put some greenery. So I'm going to put some leaves. And oh, would be good if I... A, put this down properly, and B, rotated the stamp in the correct orientation. Okay, so the leaves are going to overlap, but I've got some masks. So I know I'm starting here. It doesn't matter where you start your wreath, essentially. And I've got, so I've stamped the flowers and fussy cut them from a full adhesive back sticky post-it note. And now I can line that up on top. So this is going to be a little bit fiddly. Where's my second one? There it is. Make sure you put it in the right orientation. Not quite. There we go. And then you repeat the process. So keep layering in. <coughs> I mean, you can certainly just leave it as so. And it's going to be really cheeky. Putting a paper there so that the end of those that stem isn't pinned through as well. And rotate. So I'm going to rotate first and then move so we know that that we now need the mask down here again I'm just going to put that there 
because I don't want those little that little end bit. Going through. Two, three. I will create a video that's not live demonstrating the stencil because that way you've not got the excess chit chatter from the live and the hellos. But I thought, why not use it today as well since it's out there? And I know that lots of people have already downloaded it. So thank you so much for your support. I'm glad that people <coughs> are enjoying it. I'd love to see your creations too. Please tag me. You can tag Tatiana Creative. And I should be on social media and I'll be able to see your wreath creations. So this bit's a little bit fiddly. But... It's really well worth the effort. Well, in my opinion, anyway. I could be wrong. You may. This is not for everybody. If you don't like fiddly stamping, not for you. And that's okay. Totally. Oh. Going to need one here. And one here. Don't want that. Don't want stays on ink on my beautiful new clean template because the one I used before the numbering started one over <laughs> and okay so we were at four five will not be needed let's see six not needed Seven. So you can see that you do skip some rotations depending on where you start as well it will change so it's always just easier to test and check and these were really hard to fussy cut can I just say because 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 of the fact that the sticky note <laughs> I kept sticking to my scissors my paper snips one more number eight <coughs> Good thing these masks are the last step because they are starting to feel it. They're like, we don't want to be picked up again. One more. Brilliant. And first things first is clean the stamp because stays on is as it says, stays on. And we don't want that's a good idea, Fran. Thank you. Genius. That would have helped. <coughs> and here we have our reef. Isn't that sweet? I really like that. And I like to have the reefs an extra dimension. So I have, I'm going to put this to the side because I don't need this anymore. And what I've done is I have stamped another set of the same flower, which we will place on dimensionals as so. But once it's all colored, it'll be really cute right there. And what I did was I die cut them using the cherry blossoms <coughs> dies they semi coordinate it's not a perfect coordination I'll admit that <coughs> but it certainly works really well so now we need to watercolor and <coughs> I'm still unsure about what color I should do that it's cool just like that yeah it is we'll see 
I'll color and maybe we'll add some in. And actually, I wanted the reef to go this way because I always put them up here. But don't forget, it doesn't matter if you turn it around and put it more on the bottom right. Sorry, I'm just going to take a sip of paper. Oh, paper. <laughs> a sip of water. Okay. What color, what color, what color? I'm thinking some lovely lipstick. So what I do, my favorite way of doing this, is I take my big F block and I press my pad onto it and then I have a palette. Let's start, let's do bright colors, yeah. And call me Clover all the leaves <coughs> I know my last wreath I used similar colors but that's okay and we're going to use some grapefruit grove not traditional blossom cherry blossom kind of colors but who says we have to stick to traditional and these are the aqua painters if you really like these um, grab them now because they are gone, but we have new painters coming and there will be three, a three brush set. So I'm really excited about that. I can't wait to that, get them and I kind of need a bit more water in that. So what I'm going to do is just flip the lid so they're interchangeable. And I've picked the brush with the smaller tip because it's more of a smaller flower. And we're going to <coughs> drop some water in, starting with the Grapefruit Grove. We'll start on the flowers here. Just wiping that and I'm gonna give, add some water to the flowers first. Now, watercolor, it doesn't have to be exact. It can be very free-flowing. It's really up to you how you want to approach the water coloring. So I'm adding Grapefruit Grove <coughs> to the middle there. And I'm not being super duper accurate to be honest. I just, I, I want the watercolor look to come through really. I want it to be and then I'm going to dilute some of that lovely lipstick and add it to the tips and because it's I call this wet on wet kind of look because the orange, the grapefruit grove is still wet, they will bleed into each other. And that's exactly what I want them to do. And each flower will be unique. So you can see there, do I need to zoom in? Let me know if you'd prefer it if I zoomed in. And by wetting the flowers first, it kind of really dilutes the ink. If you didn't want the ink to be so diluted, you don't need to wet, but just remember then the bleed will be less. Working fairly quickly. I'm being a bit more accurate with the tips here than I was with. The grapefruit grove. Now these colors are our retiring in colors. They're our, what year are we in? So now I'm going to grab some undiluted grapefruit grove and add it in some more just to darken it up. Uh, we're in 2020. So these are the 20, I'm using 2018 to 2020 in colors and these are going. There's only a few days left. 
So if you like these colours, or if you have, but you don't have the reinkers yet, grab that. Now, I actually don't even know if there's any reinker stock. Grabbing a tiny bit of the lovely lipstick and adding it into the areas where there's kind of shading. So the stamp, if I bring that up, you can see the stamp has some shade work in that, which makes colouring super easy that you know that those are the areas where you can add a bit of darker colour. And this is still wet on wet, so as it dries and as I move around, you'll see that the ink will spread. We're very silent today. Ah, yes. Um, I've been doing this since I had the chamois. So Victoria, I should comment, is said that she's never thought of using the chamois to wipe off your um, aqua paint up. And <coughs> at the moment, I feel like paper towels, even though supplies are starting to increase again, I feel like they're a expensive commodity or a precious commodity. And I'm trying to keep the use of my paper towels for hygiene purposes in the kitchen. So that's one of the reasons. And I mean, that was a reason basically I used before COVID. Now we're going to set those aside there and do the same here. But I always felt like, like yes, paper towel is a paper towel and it's not so environmentally unfriendly, but I always try to do my bit for the environment. And I thought if I can clean my brush on my chamois instead of a paper towel, which goes throws into the bin and possibly into landfill, then I'm contributing to the environment. So I want these ones to have a slightly different tone. So I wanted those to have the darker, lovely lipstick because they're on the bottom. These flowers, remember, we're adding over the top of the wreath, even though you're right, Victoria, it does look quite nice on its own there. So I'm kind of trying to establish a bit more grapefruit grove on this second set of flowers. Now you only need six. If you're going to use the offset, offset wreath, it'd be good if I could speak, it would be easier if you paint these before you die cut. But I didn't want to waste time on the live die cutting. Um, so if you're going to add that second layer on the offset wreath, I have found that you only need six. Even though we stamped one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the, I tend to put them into the space in between one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, just a little tip there for you. And adding in the lovely lipstick again. And this time I'm not going to go in with the darker lovely lipstick, but I will grab some more Grapefruit Grove. Excellent. It's all done. <coughs> and just adding some more Grapefruit Grove there. Now the reason why I've moved on to these flowers is one, I'm in the flower mode. And two is that it gives us while I'm painting these, gives us a bit of time for those to dry so that I can move on to the leaves without too much bleeding. So I'm kind of adding the grapefruit grove into that sh shadow highlighting, shadows, they're not highlights, they're shadows areas that I was pointing to before. And I didn't dilute that ink, I'm just using what water I have on my brush. <coughs> now I'm going to scoot those aside. It is good to just let them air dry. I could grab the 
if we need to I might grab the heat tool and dry them a bit so now the leaves I want to dilute that green and I'm going to again just wet the leaves a little bit the more water you mix into your ink the lighter the color will be and doesn't matter if we're I know I haven't <coughs> wet those leaves but now that I've got some color on my brush I can use that to my advantage probably didn't need to press out so much call me clover but that is a beautiful I'm going to miss call me clover that it's one of my favorite greens it's nice and bright and so now I'm just going to add in some darker call me clover no specific spots per se just adding it in just to create that tonal variation see brilliant i really like that just giving my aqua painter a nice clean hey susan how's it going because i don't want any color and this is where you need a bit of paper to check fabulous <coughs> and i'm just going to grab a small block because i want to add some shadowing remember i wanted it to do go this way i wanted to add some shadowing um so i'm grabbing my gray granite and I don't need a lot of it. So that's why I've used, you can use any size clear block for this. <coughs> Thank you for the love. And I'm gonna dilute this a fair bit. Actually, before I do that, I will kind of heat set this a bit. Normally I would allow it <coughs> to dry naturally but don't want the color to bleed at this point and it's best I mean it's fairly dry but a little bit of heat just to make sure and this way now and you may have noticed that the paper curved when I heated the back so I well, it was semi curved already so I heated the back first and now by heating the front it's uncurving the other way and you can keep going so I know that wasn't much but <coughs> it's enough to just okay so we're going to add a little bit of shadowing so thank you I'm really pleased with this color palette too so the shadow I'm going to be very specific I'm going to add it to the bottom right of any of the elements that I can so for example I'll start with this leaf here that's actually quite darker than I want it to be so I'm just going to blend that out pick that up I even take my chamois and that up so really just a super light kind of shadowing super duper light there we go it's working a tad better now just try to be in control as much as you can don't put too much ink on your tip and once I've done that all 
you'll notice that it kind of just pops off the page a bit more. And because I'm sticking to this bottom right hand side rule, it will look like they're kind of popping up. So any bottom right edges exposed basically. <coughs> Ever so slightly here. Could you raise that up to the camera for a second? Yes, absolutely. So it's very subtle and I've got more there than I want. I'm trying to let me hold that still for a second. So that's it's very subtle and I wanted it to be subtle. I don't want it to be harsh. Um, it actually bothers me that this bit is so far. Okay, I'm going to leave it. But basically, you get that. So <coughs> I'm looking on my iPad now and you can that see that boo-boo but you know I make mistakes too you get the picture again and then if we want I'm just deciding whether I will use those flowers or not I know we colored them just gonna wipe down that block and now I need to decide what color cardstock to use Grove. Which one? Cover it with a sentiment. I did think that. <laughs> but let's pick our cardstock first. So that would be on a lovely lipstick that brings out those tones very nicely. And this is on Grapefruit Grove. Totally do not know which one I want to use, so it is up to you. Give me a thumbs up if you like the Grapefruit Grove, <coughs> and give me a love heart if you like the lovely lipstick. I think they both look really good, and they would work very nicely. Once again, a love heart for the lovely lipstick. Thumbs up. Oh, come on, people. We can't be <coughs> evenly split. I think I've seen two love hearts, one thumbs up, but then I've also got a thumbs up and a love heart, so that's two, two, three. Ever so slightly lovely lipstick has it so far. Just going to give it another second to see if there's any... Susan says lovely lipstick as well. Ah, oh, I'm seeing a flood of hearts now. Lovely lipstick it is. I am so missing this colour already. <laughs> <coughs> oh, I'm just going to cut my A4 sheet in half. I know, I might have to make a second one after this video has ended. And why not do the boo-boo? And two, make it in Grapefruit Grove so that I don't have to choose. We'll see. So many other things. I want to do my wish list today. That's my goal today. Do my wish list for catalog order next week. Because the new catalog goes live next week. <coughs> and I'm totally psyched. <laughs> can't wait to be able to order all of those little goodies. I think I'm going to start with a, well not a small order, but an order of lots of small little things. There's a new adhesive, um, the mini paper pumpkin boxes. I know that we don't have the paper pumpkin so much here, but paper pumpkin, for those who are Australian and have never known, is an American 
and Canadian, US, uh, North American. Um, Leslie's asking, do I typically choose gray granite for shading? I like to use a gray. <coughs> I, the, my logic between uh, picking gray granite today was it was the lightest because I wanted the lightest color I could find. And it's a gray works really well because it's subtle. Now I've got a piece of lovely lipstick ribbon here. And I think that'll go. I like to add bows, don't ask me why, but the wreaths look super duper cute with bows. And so yeah, it's the gray, the logic between that is gray is <coughs> black would be too dark. And wouldn't watercolor with stays on either. The other thing you could do is take the watercolor pencil and add that in the basic gray and then smooth it out with the water. But I didn't want to introduce another um, product into this card. I, was try I did try to keep the number of products. Now I did use die cuts to cut these flowers out but you could absolutely fussy cut them and as I said the dies don't match absolutely perfectly but they do. So I've just added those onto dimensionals and we're going to decide whether it's a yay or a nay. I think it's a nay. I think we will, I'll use those on another card and just the bow. <coughs> Fiddling with the bow, right so, right so, <laughs> becoming a poet, I think. I'm actually thinking no bow as well, oh, after all of that. So, oh yes, you did. <laughs> it's all good. Paper Pumpkin is a subscription to card kits in North America, and we will be getting a share Sunshine Paper Pumpkin kit later this month, and in the new catalogue, there's mini paper pumpkin boxes <coughs> which is super cute i feel like this card needs something else sentiment possibly that actually looks not too bad so this is my box of well it's not really a box it's a bowl of goodies and i've done this is the covid I love Paper Pumpkin. You must miss Paper Pumpkin, Leslie. Um, so this is, I was saying, this is the a COVID-19 PDF download, which is still available. Ooh, how about a simple share sunshine? Don't forget. Um, Leslie, I'll, um, that's a complicated question. So Leslie's asked, why don't we have paper pumpkin here? Cost is one of them that they're not as cost effective by the time you include the shipping from the US to here. Those are too big. Smile. Is that the same size? So I finished Netflix. <laughs> How cute is that? So I basically printed these and <coughs> let's just roll with it. What do we think? Everything will be okay. I feel like that goes really well. All this share sunshine. Um, so paper pumpkin cost is one. Seasons 2 is because your the North American summer is our winter and <coughs> they tend to be seasonal. 
Um, but we will be getting occasionally a paper pumpkin here now. I've lost that. Here it is, that share sunshine, that kind of. Mulsana, you think? So? I think so too. It's nice and small. It doesn't block. And it's kind of matches. It's not quite the same colours we've used, but it still matches. <coughs> I'm going to go with the set share sunshine. Dimensionals or not? <laughs> Too many decisions to make. I think some dimensionals. And then that grey boo boo will look like it's some shading. Um, another reason why we don't have paper pumpkin. I think I've covered them, the logistics, but we will be getting them every so often. <coughs> there. I am thrilled with that. If you want to stick around, we will quickly finish this card off by decorating the inside and the envelope. Rhinestones, yeah, I thought about it, but I feel like let's keep this one simple. It's already semi-complicated with that. So we're going to add that, but before we do that, Where's the stamp? There we go. You love it, Fran? Thank you. Grabbing. Actually. Ha ha. Found a spot for these ones. What do we think? I've got dimensionals on it. I'd prefer it if they didn't. So I'm going to pull the dimensional off. <coughs> so the creative process, for me anyway, is a lot about experimentation. And that one there. And that one there. Could have stamped some leaves in the background, but I'm not going to. Snips. To trim Whoop. and then it fell off because the glue hasn't dried yet so I'm gonna hold that one in place and then snip it Side. and the envelope of course can't forget the envelope <coughs> I'm going to stamp it in the corner kind of not quite the wreath but the concept of the wreath there and then I'll grab the leaf stamp And I think I can get away with these masks one more time. And sort of place the leaves similarly. There's a tongue twister of a word, really. Oh. And we're going to leave that black and white <coughs> so I'm just scooting those things over so yes please nominate add your nominations um, let me know who you would like to send this card to or who you would like me to send this card to in your on your behalf this is only open to those watching on Facebook for the moment thank you Leslie and so if you're watching on YouTube, I'm sorry I'm not taking nominations there. I'm thinking how I can do that. But yes, as long as your nominee is in Australia, I am more than happy for you to nominate. And just some bit of housekeeping. 
there's lots of exciting things, exciting things. Oh. <coughs> I've got the links in the video description, but there is the In and Color Club, which is, I think from the memory, $45 a month for times five months. And you'll collect the five new pretty in colors. So I've used some of the retiring in colors. You'll get to collect that. If you like ribbon and designer series paper, I have shares of DSP and ribbon. And you can sign up for one of my shares. Again, link in video description. And then there's also joining special I'll call it from the 3rd of June and that is get a bundle extra on top my pleasure Fran enjoy your evening and <coughs> I've also got the May host code so if you like in the video description but May host code is 7HX3VJ9. I hope that's right. It's in the video description and you can order at bit.ly shop with Tatiana to place your order with me and then you'll get a free thank you, well, a little thank you gift if you spend over $50 and you'll be part of my customer Ooh, loyalty program. So that's the housekeeping for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy that. And my template for this offset wreath is available as a free download off my blog. And the link is in the video description. Thank you for spending time with me. I hope I've inspired you to be creative. And I'll see you <coughs> next time. Bye for now.